Come on. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together. How many of you love him today for real? Hallelujah. Lord, we love you more than anything. Lord, we love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence. How good you are to us. You're a way maker. <laughs> Miracle worker. <laughs> Promise keeper. My God. That is who you are. That's why I can say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Why? Because you're a way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. What? What? That is who you are. That's why I can say, Lord, I love You're not ready. You're not <laughs> You can't shake anybody hand, but just point to him and tell him, I love him because he's a way maker. Come on there. Even if you're waiting on a way to be made. <laughs> Somebody know he's a way maker in here today. And you don't even know how he's doing it and you don't care, but he's making the way. I, I was praying what night. So Father, we thank you. And we bless you today. <laughs> we give you all the glory. Declare there is none like it unto you. There's nobody that matches up to you. So you're worthy of our best complaint that you never fail that you always keep your word and there is no slack in you thank you God in Jesus name amen give him a good praise go on give him a good praise Today we want to talk about, talk on the subject, follow the presence. Follow the presence. Some of you follow a lot of stuff, but I want to tell you that it's the presence that you need to be following. We follow ideologies and thought people, philosophies. But it's important to follow the presence. And know when the presence is here. Follow the presence. Because I'm going to open up really with this one statement. Sometimes you only have a promise. And to get to that promise, you've got to follow the presence. Sometimes all you got is a promise. What happens when you have a promised land in front of you, but there is a swollen river to cross to get to it? Called Jordan. Everybody has their Jordan. I'm not talking about 
gym shoes. The river, turn me up, represents all the obstacles that stand in the way of you getting what God has for you. And with every promise comes an obstacle or challenge. I mean, you know, I'm really right about that. If this statement is any consolation, we all have them. I have a word of encouragement and exhortation for you early in this message. Do not give up. Follow the presence and you will surely get to what's promised. If you follow the presence, you will get the promise. But some of you give up at the Jordan. Because Jordan is an obstacle. But what you pro what's been promised to you is, is past the Jordan. Look across the room and tell somebody it's just a river. Tell them don't give up too soon. Joshua 3, 1 to 4, verses 1 through 4. Joshua 3. And this is our principal text, and we'll bounce in and out of different verses. I'll go to a few other scriptures, but we're just, this is the basic thing. And, and before I read this, we were on a, a Zoom conference call with Reconciliation and, and our bishop, Bishop Joseph Garlington, and, and, uh, he said something, and it, and it sparked something in my heart, and it's, it's in this passage. And when we get there, I'll, I'll identify it, but you need to listen to something above you and around you that has a word in them so it can spark a word for you. Amen? Amen? Because if you aren't around people that can word spark you, you won't be energized. You need to be word sparked. Does that make sense? Somebody that, that says something and, and, and in a short while it sets something off on the inside of you. Just one statement, one little word, one little phrase. Word, it's called, I, I, I gave it a name, word sparking. And you can hang out with people that spark the wrong stuff in you, but you need to be sparked by the word of God. And here, here's this reading. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was. <laughs> the Bible is good. So it was. That means here is the situation. So it was. After three days, that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people. They didn't ask them. They went through the camp and commanded the people. Now the commanders did this, the officers did this, but Joshua told them. Leadership told them. When you see the ark of the covenant of God, of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it. That you may know the way by which you must go. 
Don't come near it. Don't crowd the ark. Don't crowd the priest. Don't crowd the Levites. Stay far enough back that you can see where you're going. Don't come near it. I'm saying a lot in there. It is, and let me read that again. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go. And here is the line that Bishop said in speaking to the circumstances of this current season. He says, for you have not passed this way before. Sometimes you encounter stuff in your life and you haven't gone there before. Something you have a previous experience that you can help with the new experience, but some things happen that you say, oh, this is new water here. I have never been in this place before. You have not come this way before. How do you know where we are now? We have never come this way before. Come on here. But I'm telling you today there's a way out. Leaving the wilderness en route to the promised land, the children of Israel encounter a potential faith shutting down challenge. It is called the Jordan. Mind you, there were over, see, see, before there were other crossings of the Jordan. There were the, 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 the spies that crossed over. So it's crossable. But this is the spring of the year and the Jordan is swollen to the point that it's, it's deeper and it's wider. And you're talking about carrying over a million people and all of their belongings over the Jordan. Uh, first of all, some of these people have experienced a sea if they were 20 and down, but they have not experienced deep, deep water. Deep, deep water. Joshua and Moses had, they walked through the Red Sea. But they weren't in it. They walked through it, but they weren't in it. They walked through it, but they weren't in it. That means they, they didn't get wet. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? So here they are encountering something that they had never seen. I dare say some of them never swam before. So not only is fear rising up, the potential for loss is rising up, impending death is looming because you don't know what, ev what is even in the river. And you can't swim. And most people that can't swim, that, that really don't want to get in water, they don't trust what's up underwater because they've watched too many horror flicks. They're afraid something is going to come up out the water. Some of y'all just, no, some of them is just plain afraid of the water. So this is the dilemma. Over a million folk trying to get them across. So they needed specific instruction. Our scripture says, they came to the Jordan and lodged there before they crossed over. In Joshua 1 and 11, and, and 11, God told the people of Israel, wait three days at the shore of the Jordan River. But in facing the river, they had questions. How can we cross this river? That means well, God told you that when you get there, stay there three days. See, sometimes God has to ready your heart for what he is about to do next. And even though the Jordan represented passage to the promise, he had to get their hearts ready for what was next. And sometimes he'll take you to where the challenge is and he said, just stand right there for three days. So he can get you, your, your, your mindset ready. And in the process, you start moving. Okay, what's going to happen? We, 
Okay, okay, this is day one. Okay, God, you, you, you said they stay three days. Okay, what do we need? Uh, uh, yeah, just, just wait. Because sometimes you think you're ready to cross when you're not. And God forbid somebody push you. <laughs> and that's when the fight broke out. Some of y'all can't push in the water. <laughs> if you're one of them people, put your hands up. I can't push you in. Will, put your hand up. <laughs> He's sitting there like I'm not talking to him. He just fell out in the aisle. Somebody go get him. But there was something with them that they seemingly had overlooked. They had something with them that they had overlooked. And I'm telling you, sometimes what you, look, what you need is right with you. And you don't pay any attention to it. That's why you need a leader who can see what's with you. So he can tell you how to operate with what's with you. So you can get from one side of the Jordan onto the other side. So you can progress toward the promise. What was the thing that Joshua saw? Joshua saw the ark. Joshua then gave instruction to do with the ark in their situation. But let's discuss the ark. We need to talk about the ark. According to the Bible, Moses had this special cabinet known as the ark of a covenant. It's, it's a cabinet. And, 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 and inside of this cabinet, which was made of very expensive wood, had rings on the side, so you, you could not touch the cabinet. Only the, the priest could go in at a certain time of year, and they would, not be, 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 they would not fall dead or anything. But the point was is that it was a special place. It was a special cabinet. And God told Moses to build it and place it in the Holy of Holies. It would be at the center of, of, of the camp. It would be in a visible spot always inside. The, well, they couldn't see it. It was inside the traveling tent called the tabernacle. And this, 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 this cabinet had rings on it. And when it was time to move it, the priests would not touch the cabinet. They would just slip the, the, the rods through the ring, lift it, and carry it from place to place. All through the wilderness. What was in it? It was called the Ark of the Covenant because it, it, it reminded Israel that God had struck covenant with them. You will be my people. He had struck covenant with Abraham with them. So as we look at it, we look at this, 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 this Ark, we look at What's going on with it? Inside the ark is the Ten Commandments which Moses has gotten from God. Also, there was a little container with some of the manna in it. And then there was Aaron, the chief priest, rod that budded as a sign to the people of God's presence. So all of those things were inside of the ark. And on top of the ark, it had two gold angels whose wings touched. So this just wasn't any box. This box was placed in the Holy of Holies, not in the outer court. And only the priest could go into the Holy of Holies. Why was this ark so important? The ark of the covenant was the place of presence. It was the place of presence. You mean a great big God localized himself into a cabinet. He became the God of the cabinet. But it really said, I'm with you. So when it was time for the children of Israel to cross over Jordan, it was Joshua who said, oh, we have what we need. 
We just need to give instruction how to operate with it. And in essence, I want you to do, when you see the ark move, you stay so far behind it and you start moving. You start moving. See, the problem is we don't move with the presence. Some people go to church, but would you know if God wasn't in there? The presence. That's why in worship, I enjoyed what was going on because I felt the presence. My hand was up. I was going because it, the presence. He, he had, what had God done with our worship? He had localized himself and come in. That's why you need the presence. That's, not, that's why you need to pray until somebody joins you. Oh, my God. Did you hear me? How many have been in prayer and you just got overcome? Some of you get a little embarrassed. You don't want nobody to see you cut up in the house. Some of you don't care. You just holler anyway. Exodus 25 and 8. Here are the instructions from God about this ark. And about God's presence. And it said... And, 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 and let them make me a sanctuary, a dwelling place, that I may dwell among them. A sanctuary is, is a special dedicated spot that I may dwell with them. But even more specific, Exodus 25 and 22 gives us this. He said, and there I will meet you and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat. The top of the ark was considered the mercy seat. It was where the blood was sprinkled once a year uh, uh, to atone for sin. It was the mercy seat. From between the two cherubim which are on, on the ark of the covenant of testimony about everything which I will give you in commandments to, in command to the children of of Israel. I can't see because the design is so great on the uh, screen. But here we get him saying, and I'm going to pick part of that phrase out. There I'm, I will meet with you on the ark of the testimony. And then he said, I will speak with you. This mind blowing idea about God that we must consider the eternal God who is not confined to, to the existence of time. The infinite God who is not bound by the constraints of space. The transcendent God who dwells above and beyond all time. And the immense God who fills all space has condescended to the weakness of man and limited himself to an ark. So he could be in their presence. So if you are in the center and the camp is built around you and it's, and it's high enough, every time they look to the center of camp, they could say the presence of the Lord. Oh, God. The presence of the Lord. Because they needed the presence. So when they moved the ark, everybody moved with it. The ark's moving. Move with it. Stand back far enough so you can see it when it moves. See, some of y'all like the bun roll. You know how some, you, you get right up on it. You can't. He said, stand back far enough so you will know which way to go. The reason why you need to stand back and let the ark go, because you've never gone this way before. You've never been this way before. So you need the presence to take you. You need the presence to take you. Because the presence knows the way. <laughs> Are y'all getting this today? <laughs> See, you're trying to rely on GPS. And, and, and we've gotten the worst instruction I've ever had in my life from a GPS. 
I've ended up on a dead end street by a GPS. And sometimes when the GPS uh, 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 don't, don't, don't have any more instruction, he said, this is as far as we can go. You are at the end. Or it redirects you back to where you were and you still lost. And sometimes we have to turn the rascal off and just trust and try to find our way out. Anybody been in that situation? But it's not so with the present. God says step back so you can see which way you're going to go because you haven't been this way before. But the presence knows the way. And the presence will take you into something that was a, a, a hindrance to you. It would block you. It's a Jordan River. And when I thought about this Jordan River, uh, uh, last week I, 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 I bought me some breakfast and I went to, uh, I, I love Belle Isle. It, I, had, I have so many childhood memories of, of Belle Isle and, and the water and, and playing games and family picnics and everything else. But part of Belle Isle is flooded. And, and a lot of the roads are closed. And I saw, I experienced, when I was reading about this Jordan River flooding, I experienced it, in, and you know how God will take you someplace to see something, and then he'll bring the matching word to it, and that's what Bishop did with me, brought the matching word to it, to this experience. And, and I, I got up under a shed after I chased all the ducks and pigeons away. <laughs> and, but before then, I walked up to the shore and I saw something I had never experienced before. What, had I, what did I see? When I got to the shore, that's a concrete embankment with a, a fence along the shoreline, right there next to the marina, uh, 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 this, this museum right there, and the Dawson Museum, and, and I saw sandbags and stuff. The water had risen so much in the Detroit River till it overflowed the banks. So that's what was happening in that day. The water had overflowed the bank and had run into places that it had not been in. And so there was a gentleman standing there. He said, I've been fishing this river for 50 years and I've never seen the water this high. You have not come this way before. Get ready. There's some stuff that's going on now. You have not come. Oh, don't sit there like you good with it. And like it's okay, and like, like I've experienced this before. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You have not come this way before. But somebody already knows about it. He set the world spinning. He separated night from day. He knows the way. And it's his presence. So you need to follow the, because it knows the, come on, come on, come on. Did you hear me? Follow the presence because it knows the way. You don't have to know. Just stay on the bank until he tells you to move. Because at the right time, he's going to tell Joshua, tell your commanders. Tell the people, stand this far back. <laughs> so they will see which way to go. Because sometimes you want to be up on it this way, but you can't see. Stand back so you can see the salvation of the Lord. Stand back. Just let God do it. You want to be nosy. I'm going to get up close to this. I got to see what's going to happen. God said, get back. Stand back and see what I'm getting ready to do. Come on, 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 come on. Are y'all with me today? See, you need to press. Somebody scream presence in this room. I know you're behind mass. Say it again, presence. <laughs> we 
Well, somebody say, okay, that's Old Testament, and, and past is almost done. Where, where is the presence today? Where is the presence today? There is no ark. It was lost through time. I believe it's going to be discovered before Jesus comes back. And everything in it is going to be saved and is, begun, is, is going to become a, a, a witness to, to, as a testimony of God's covenant with us that is still in place. Come on, come on. Are, are y'all out there? God don't leave itself without a witness in the earth. Every witness to what God did in this book is still in the earth. And he's going to bring it to pass. And they'll undeniably have to say that God said that and there it is. God did that, and there it is. And, and so, so running over to the New Testament, I have two scriptures. John 15 and 7 is what I gave you last week. And it says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you, and it shall be. If you abide in me, all the saying, maintain presence with me. And then you will ask what you will, and I'll go get it. <laughs> That's what it means. Are y'all out there? See, you want it, but you don't want to abide in him to get it. You just want it because you think you deserve it. But much of what we get, we don't deserve. He's just graceful. And he's good to us. And the next scripture is Acts 17, 28. <laughs> Talking about presence. In case you're confused about how it is you need to operate, it says, it says for in him, in who? Yeah. We what? Yeah. Live and what? Move, Move and what? Yeah. Have our being. As also some of your, your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. See, you are he, in his presence. For in him, in his presence, you live, move, and have your being. So if you want to know which way to go in this season, trust the presence in you. Come on. Not your emotion. His presence. Presence needed then, presence needed now. They had not passed that way before, and we have not passed that way before. The presence led them out, and the presence will lead us out. What did that ark do? They said, follow the ark. And where the ark is going to go is going to challenge you. But follow it. Here they go carrying it in. Wait a minute. You told us to stand on the shore. That was for three days. Your three days is up. This is moving time. Because so, sometimes you get to a challenge and you think that's where you ought to set up housekeeping. And you get comfortable. Three days become three years and 30 years of absolutely hanging out at the bank, wanting to get across. How many of you know I'm out of time now? I, I, I don't want to hang here no more. I don't like this place. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's time to move. I, no, no, no. This not, this not, this, this is not the promise. It's not the promise. Oh, 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 you can serve your chitlins there and your hammocks, but it's not the promise. You can eat your prime rib there, but it is not the promise. So here they go. Which way that are going? Well, stand back far enough to see. Which way is it going? What? We going in the water? Follow the ark. Follow the presence. Because it's going to challenge you to follow. See, come on. I'm going to say a crazy word we learned as a kid. You fraidy cat, you scaredy cat. Come on, we're going through this thing. 
what we following? We following the presence. And, 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 and here's what happened. This swollen river at the springtime that was deep and could swallow up all of those people. That's its capabilities. Here go the ark. So the people were standing back far enough to see it. And the priest stepped their toe in the water. And the water started to move. And everywhere they stepped, it moved back. And everywhere they stepped, it moved back some more. And they kept walking in. But hopefully they didn't have to look back to see if they had any followers. They kept walking in until the water heaved up on one side and on the other. And they walked across. Them and all the people, the ark leading the way. And I got to believe there was some worshipers there singing all the way. As the Lord was taking them through. And that's what's got to happen with you. You got to follow in spite of what you saw as something that could stop you on one side and you get on through. But you stop to have a conversation, to complain, to fuss, to commemorate, to, to say, I'm, I'm, this is too hard, this is Shut up, shut up, and follow. But before they left the bank, there was another structure that's in this passage. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It said, sanctify yourself. You must get ready for the trip. Because sometime when moving day come, you're carrying too much stuff. Because those people had all their stuff with them. You, sometimes you, you move with too much stuff. Anybody ever move with too much stuff and you realize, what, did it, what do I need all this stuff for? <laughs> I haven't been in it since I've been in my apartment. I haven't been in it since I've been in my house. This has been packed up since I was in my old house. Anybody had that experience? You moving too much. You paying people to move junk. You should have had 10 garages and you still, you still moving that old pair of shoes that you ain't going to never wear no more. It's a platform with a glass shoe. And then back in the day, they had some dice in the heel. You, you still carrying them as if they're valuable to something. That old couch with one leg missing. But it got memory. This is where choo-choo. Go, 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 go. We changed this diaper. This is this. This is where... This is where I nurse my kid. Sometime when moving day come, you need to say, hey, you need to sanctify yourselves. Clean out. So you can be prepared for what's new and be prepared for the trip. You need the presence. And I'm going to end like I start. You are a way maker. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. <laughs> You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Get them hands up. I worship you.
Come on, church. Why? Because you are way maker, miracle. Come on, come on. You are way maker, miracle worker. My God, that is who you are. Come on, say that one more time. You are a way maker. Way. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. I'm not convinced yet. Anybody know that about him? He's a way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper, my God, you are here. You, his presence, his presence. You are. Right behind your mask, just worship God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I, I, I want you to notice today. We have a way maker. It's his presence. The presence knows the way. The presence knows the way to the promise. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your head so you gate. The presence knows the way to the promise. <laughs> Somebody just got away made just in the last few days. Come on. Yeah. Oh God. The end of the under day. Thank you, God. Oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lift up your heart. Hallelujah. 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 I want to hear some joyful people today that know the Lord is doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you are here. <laughs> I worship you. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Hallelujah. We thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies. We thank you, God, that you are our way maker. You are promise keeper. You are light in the darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who you are today. God, we thank you. Thank you. We feel you moving in this room today. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift them hands of worship. It's right here, right? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no, they're going to go shake it down. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Oh. 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 Thank you that you're a promise keeper. Whew. Whew. 
You never stop, you never stop. You never stop, you never stop. You never stop. Y'all don't know that. You never stop, you never stop. Just go from one to the other, however you feel. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.